All right, the vented discs are fitted, the spaced calipers are fitted, the wheel bearings are adjusted, and now the last thing I need to do, hopefully, is bleed the brakes. Let's take a look. So bleeding the brakes is essentially forcing new brake fluid through the brake lines via a number of bleed nipples. And what this process does is purge old fluid, uh, and more importantly in my case, air out of the system. Now, why would there be air in the system? Well, if you've done any work that involves splitting a brake line, like I did when I removed the calipers, air is going to find its way in there. And air in a brake system is bad because air compressors. So a telltale sign of this is a spongy feel to the brake pedal and a general lack of stopping power, which can be pretty unnerving. So it's super important that you get all the air out of the system. So the bleed nipples will typically be found behind the road wheels on either the brake caliper or the brake cylinder. Now the number can vary from car to car. Some vehicles have four that's one per wheel and others like the Capri have three so that's got two at the front and one at the back. Now it's standard practice when you do this job to start with the bleeder furthest away from the master cylinder and then work your way towards the closest. So in other words on the Capri that's going to be left rear, left front, right front. Still with me? Good. I'm only going to show you the left front and that's essentially because it's the easiest to film but don't panic because the process, no matter which side or which wheel you're at, is exactly the same. Now, a couple of things before you get going. You're going to need fresh brake fluid here. Uh, that's to keep the reservoir topped up because if you let this run dry at any point, you're going to have to start all over again. So keep an eye on that. Uh, and secondly, having a mate to give you a hand here is also pretty helpful. So give a mate a call. So here we are at the left front. Now at this point I've already bled the left rear and after I do this one I'll be moving on to the right front. So first off I've checked to make sure there's plenty of fluid in the reservoir and now I'm going to just let it gravity bleed and by that I simply mean crack the bleed nipple and wait until fluid starts to flow out. Right, I've left that to drip for a few seconds, and now I'm going to snug the bleeder back up. Okay, what you need now is something like this. Now this is a piece of flexible tubing that I can push fit onto the bleeder. Now it does need to be a tight fit, so this was specifically made for the job. I picked this up from the parts store for less than a pound. It's probably your easiest bet. So like I said, one end you're going to push fit onto the bleeder and then the other end you're going to submerge in a jar of brake fluid. Now you don't need that much, okay? That's just what I've accumulated over the years. Okay, remember that friend I mentioned? Well now will be a good time to invite them round because an extra pair of hands here is going to be really helpful. Or rather feet in this case. So for those of you who were thinking, there's no brake pads in the caliper, I've put them in. I did forget. All right, let's do this. I've positioned Dale in the driver's seat and he's awaiting instruction and it's gonna go something like this. Okay, first, crack the bleeder. Okay, now I'm gonna tell Dale to depress the brake pedal smoothly and slowly. Depress pedal! Okay, as Dale pushes down on the pedal, the fluid is going to take the path of least resistance. In other words, it's going to get forced out of the system and into this jam jar, and hopefully take any air with it. And once the pedal's all the way to the floor, Dale is going to signal to me, Pedal to the floor! At which point, I'm going to snug the bleeder back up. And now I'm going to tell Dale to release the pedal slowly. Pedal up. Pedal to the top. 
and now the process starts all over again. Now you can repeat this process as many times as you like as long as you keep the reservoir topped up don't forget about that but crucially what you're looking for is clear fluid entering the jam jar with no air bubbles. Cool on the last few goes around we've had nothing but clean fluid entering the jam jar with zero sign of any air. Now if you've got one of these rubber caps don't forget to refit that it'll just stop any dirt and grime going into the bleeder but that's pretty much it for this side okay and once you've repeated this process at every bleeder and done one final top up of the brake reservoir to the max line it should be job done and if you've successfully removed all the air from the system you'll have a nice firm brake pedal and responsive brakes now I've shown you a really thorough way of bleeding brakes here uh, is it possible to cut corners and do the job on your own? Yes it is, there's plenty of videos out there to show you how to do that. Uh, it's not that much different to what I've shown you here, but what I've shown you here is my preferred way of doing it. And I've always had a lot of success with it, so cool, thanks for watching. Uh, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to click that like button, and I will see you next time.